Hello and welcome to MCAT Chat. Today we are going to be chatting about amino acids. Amino acids, there are about 20 of them and they are monomers and they are the building blocks of proteins and so subsequently they're pretty important because as one of my first year bio profs said, um, human beings are basically just bags of water and proteins. So we're going to be learning about those building blocks of proteins, amino acids. So the first item on the agenda is to look at the absolute configuration at the alpha position. So right here, what I'm showing you, this is the general structure of an amino acid. You have an alpha carbon in the center. It's next to this carboxylic acid group. You have an R group, which R is going to stand for any functional group. And then you have a hydrogen and an amino group. Now, this R group is what's going to differentiate one amino acid from the other 19. Depending on what that R group is, what that functional group is, it's going to determine if that amino acid is a tyrosine, if it's a glutamate, and all the other 20. So that's the differentiating factor. But what, I'm, what you see on the screen here, this is the general structure of all of them. They only differ by whatever this R group is. So the common amino acids are known as alpha amino acids. And that's because the substituent of the alpha carbon, which is that carbon in the center, is a primary amino group, which is this guy here. So how can we tell it's a primary amino group? Well, it's a primary amino group because the nitrogen is only attached to one carbon, which makes it primary. So the only exception to, these, to this absolute configuration rule that we're talking about um, is proline and the reason is is because proline has a secondary amino group it's an NH and it's attached it's a nitrogen that's attached to two carbons um, but just for I guess easiness um, and and just by convention we kind of refer to all of the 20 amino acids um, as alpha amino acids but just so you know proline is that exception okay so the next thing we're going to look at is amino acids as dipolar ions so I'm going to move this guy just like that okay so amino acids are dipolar ions so what does this mean so the first thing i want to bring your attention to is that amino acids have charged groups of opposite of opposite polarity and because they have this opposite polarity kind of like poles they have two ends that have a different charge we call them dipolar ions or zwitter ions which is a very cool sciencey word so zwitter ion dipolar ion basically just means that you have this positive on one end and this negative on the other creating these two different poles so um, the amino group and the carboxylic acid group are going to readily ionize. What does ionization mean? It basically just means that they can gain or lose um, an electron, which is going to give them a positive or negative charge. So at physiological pH, why do we have this general structure and this general structure? The difference here, here we have one extra hydrogen giving this a positive charge, and here we've lost this hydrogen given it, giving it a negative charge on that carboxylic acid group. So why is this? Well, at physiological pH, which is the pH of the body, the amino group is going to be protonated, and the carboxylic acid group is going to be deprotonated or unprotonated. And so the carboxylic acid group is going to be in its conjugate base form, and we call it carboxylate. And so this is the physiolo at physiological pH. This is the general structure of your amino acids. Okay. Next, we're going to move on to classifications. And there's many different ways we can... Um, we can classify all of the 20, and we're going to look at four different categories. We're going to look at acidic, basic, hydrophobic, and hydrophilic. And here it is. Okay, let's put this more into the center here. So, your acidic amino acids are aspartic acid, I hope it can focus, glutamate, or glutamic acid, hold it up like this, maybe that's better. And your basic amino acids are arginine, lysine, histidine, and then you have a whole list of hydrophobic, hydrophilic. If anyone has a really good mnemonic for, um, for memorizing which amino acids are which, that would be really helpful. Put it in down below if you can. It's kind of difficult because um, many of the amino acids, well not many, but a few of them do share um, similar letters. The, the beginning letter is the same, so it's, it's kind of difficult to make an acronym, but if anyone has a cool way of remembering them, that might be helpful for others. 
So you'll notice that on the hydrophobic and hydrophilic list, there are two amino acids that appear on both. You have tryptophan and tyrosine, and tryptophan and tyrosine as being both hydrophobic and hydrophilic. So hydrophobic, basically just water-fearing, so they're non-polar, and then hydrophilic is water-loving or polar. So the reason why both of those amino acids, tryptophan and tyrosine, appear on both lists is because they're amphipathic, meaning that they can have both hydrophobic and hydrophilic tendencies. So that is the list and some of the classifications. It's not much more exciting than that. Something a bit more exciting are the reactions that you need to know. And the first one we're gonna talk about are the sulfur linkages or the formation of these disulfide bonds. So here is the reaction for you. Okay, move this over. Okay, so here is the reaction of a disul disulfide bond formation, and we're gonna walk through this. So essentially what's happening when you have the formation of a disulfide bond is when two thiol groups, and thiol is an SH group, two thiol groups from two different cysteine residues are going to become oxidized. Oxidized means they lose electrons. So a sulfur linkage is going to result in a disulfide bond formation. So can anyone see the thiol group? So a thiol group, remember, is an SH. So you have one cysteine here and you have another cysteine here. And here, conveniently, are the two thiol groups right next to each other on either side of this plus sign. And when they are going to react to form a disulfide bond or um, a sulfur linkage, you are going to basically be losing those hydrogens and you're gonna be forming this SS bond. And these are two cysteine residues forming joining at this SS bond. So two thiol groups come together, lose electrons oxidation, you kind of knock out both of these hydrogens and you get this sulfur linkage for simplicity's sake. So again, the MCAT, I mean, it's not gonna ask you to draw this reaction. It might be embedded within a passage with some um, questions or you might have um, just direct questions about, you know, is this oxidation, is it reduction or whatever, but it's just good to kind of know what's happening. So two thiol groups, oxidation, sulfur linkage between two cysteine residues. The next reaction is a peptide bond formation. So here is peptide bond formation. So remember how we said that amino acids were basically just these building blocks or these monomers? Well, what the peptide bond linkage is, is a polymerization reaction. So a polymerization reaction means we're gonna be making a polymer. And a polymer is basically just joining those little building blocks or monomers together. So amino acids, they can be polymerized, which is what we're gonna see in this reaction. They're gonna be forming these linear chains known as um, amino acid chains. And these amino acid chains are really what make up um, proteins. And between each of the amino acids, how are they joined head to tail to form these linear chains? Well, they're joined through peptide bonds or linkages. And a peptide bond or linkage is going to be between the carboxylic group on one amino acid and then the amino group on the other amino acid. And this reaction is a condensation reaction or a dehydration synthesis. So what does condensation and dehydration mean? Basically, you're losing water. With dehydration, that's pretty, um, pretty clear. You dehydrated, you don't have water. So you're losing water in this reaction. Um, you can think about condensation just like when, you're, you have con when you, your water... Um, we have like a cold glass of water on a hot day, you'll see condensation, the, the little water droplets are gonna kind of cling to the sides of your glass. So they're losing water, they're going away from the main body of water in your glass. Um, so you're just losing water, whichever way you wanna remember it, that's just what's happening and you should probably know that. So how are we losing water? Well, basically we're forming, so here's the, the junction here of this carboxylic, this carbon from the carboxylic acid and the nitrogen from the amino group. These are two separate amino acids here and they join to form one. And basically you have your oxygen here that's gonna pull these two hydrogens, this negative charge is gonna be attracted to these two that bear a positive charge. And then you're going to be getting this linkage. So 
Um, that's really all the peptide bond linkage is. One thing you should know is there's only one peptide bond, one peptide bond per two amino acids. So it's not like when you want to link in, like in two amino acids, you need three peptide bonds. There's only one in between each. So the residue with the free amino group, this side, is known as the N-terminus. And then the residue with the free carboxylate group, which is the uh, conjugate base of the carboxylic acid, that's what we call it, carboxylate, that is the C-terminus. So you have an N-terminus and a C-terminus, and these can both um, undergo this reaction again and form another peptide bond on either side and form a really long chain of amino acids. So water is lost. Now, the opposite reaction you also need to know is a hydrolysis, and this is when we have a peptide bond and we want to break it. So it's basically just the opposite of what happened. So if the opposite, so if in the last reaction we lost water, in this reaction we're going to use water. So here we have two amino acids that are joined. I mean, they both have the R's. So we're not really sure which one they are. They're just, they're just the two general structures of the amino acids. They're joined at that carbon-nitrogen link right there, that peptide bond, the amino group, the carboxylic acid. They've joined. You can see that connection right there. And with the input of water, that oxygen is going to be restored to that carboxylate and the hydrogen will be restored to that amino group that's protonated there. So water is used in the reaction and this is just breaking the peptide bond. So now we've gone from two amino acids joined by a peptide bond into two separate monomers. So literally just the reverse of what we saw here. Okay, just going the other way.